Hello and welcome to The Insurance Apprentice, a competitive reality show where up-and-coming young professionals risk it all to become the face of the insurance industry. I'm your host, Nuntu Sugumhlungu. We're halfway through a season nine, and with each passing week, the stakes become greater and greater, the tasks more grueling, the judges more critical, and the teams get smaller and smaller. This episode is brought to you by the Insurance Crime Bureau, a non-profit company dedicated to fighting organized insurance crimes and fraudulent claims. Following this week's task briefing, the teams will have to present their solutions to the judges, who will then assess their presentations with the goal of separating the champions from the industry frauds. This is one competition where you can run, but you cannot hide. Last week was a tough week. It was a good task. It was an exceptionally good task, but tough. We're looking at a sovereign risk. I learned a lot about myself, not to take things at face value. So I almost feel like there is a moral duty. I honestly didn't feel confident. You know, you look around the room and you're like, everybody here deserves to be here. Project Synergy will be operating within the insurance space. South Africa was not exposed to a lot of catastrophic losses. It was a tough task for me. I thought I was the one leaving. I'd like Marissa and Rafilwe to step forward. When Simon called me out, I immediately thought I was going home. The two of you were the top scorers. I'd just like to win a challenge for once. <laughs> two of you will be leaving us today. It was shocking for me. I stood out um, amongst the two guys that left. This week, I am gonna gun for it. Unfortunately, sees another two contestants leaving the competition. How do you guys feel about last week? Tough day, absolutely tough, but it was, uh, it ended up being a good one. At some point, I just thought, are we going to be grilled some more? I just couldn't wait for it to end. Yeah. This week will probably require me to be a little bit more creative. I want to think differently. To see the way you grew from, I don't know what I'm doing to, I'm so anxious. You said those words to me, I'm going home today, to you did so well if, to where you got to from that. And I think that's the whole point of it, is somehow the pressure needs to bring out the best in us. This whole process is just a growth process, so you don't lose, you just win or learn. Congratulations to the two of you. Yeah, thank I mean, you. Top performers for last week, that's thank amazing. You. Thank you. That is amazing. The news is great and I'm here again, but I'm still going to work hard. I think getting into a place where like, I'm fine, I did enough, is not gonna be a good. I think it's impossible to get there, honestly, with that no. judging. I uh, don't know, yeah. I don't think you can get to a point where you're feeling 100%. Maybe I didn't speak up enough in terms of certain ideas um, because I wasn't the leader. This, this week, no holds barred. I'm gonna say what I need to say, when I need to say it. And we spend time together, we build relationships. It's, it's tougher than I thought it would be yeah. to yeah. see people go home. First episode and the second episode, I had a change of strategy. This week, I think I'm gonna continue participating. But I'm hopeful this week. And good luck, guys. Yeah, Thank good, you. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes. Welcome back, contestants. Today is a very special day, actually, because this is the first time that the Insurance Crime Bureau is sponsoring a task. And I'd really like to thank our guest judge, Garth de Klerk, uh, who spent uh, a lot of time putting this together with his team. And I trust it's going to be one of the more challenging and exciting ones that we'll see this season. So yeah, welcome Garth and over to you. Thank you very much, Simon, and good morning. It's a pleasure of ours to spend some time with you today. And we're really looking forward to an interactive day today. A little bit more about the Insurance Crime Bureau. We are based on the principle of community. We believe in the Latin definition of communitas which represents multiple organizations when you're dealing with a problem or a challenge. The insurance environment in South Africa at the moment is an incredibly competitive environment, and it is based on the fact that the fastest turnaround to the client is a unique selling point of a policy or a product. The challenge behind that is that that opens up 
the policies and the insurers to the element of fraud. You will be delivering a presentation of around of 10 minutes to present a workable solution looking at elements of cross-carrier fraud, specifically analyzing the risk that is encountered by the financial services sector, the insurance industry, as regards to cross-carrier fraud from organized criminal syndicates. And you'll be looking at solutions such as sharing information and sharing resources to counter the issue, as well as please do not forget the victims. So really looking forward to hearing from you today and looking forward to spending the time with you while you develop this. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Garth. My guest judge, ever present, Knox, welcome back. Thank you, Simon. Any words from you? Yeah, guys, uh, good morning. I think from my side, just um, it's a very exciting task and as nerve-wracking as the competition is. Remember to just take it all in, enjoy the process, um, leverage off each other's strengths, and put your best foot forward today, okay? Thanks, Knox. Uh, we have an uneven number, of course, and we're still going to have two teams, um, which means one team is going to have more members than the other. Wayne, given that you had such an amazing experience in the last season with making choices around how many personnel were in a team, would you prefer being in the team of three or the team of four? The enormity of the task is quite substantial, so I'd like to be in the team of four today. Ah, <laughs> different call to last season. Well done. Okay, done. You'll have a chance to go away now and do your preparation, and then we'll see you back here. Um, I don't need you to choose a leader today, but please do have a good catchy name uh, for, your, for your team and uh, we'll see you back shortly. You're dismissed. The Insurance Crime Bureau, created in 2008, is a non-profit organization dedicated to combating organized insurance fraud and the related crimes within South Africa. The organization advocates a set of values and responsibilities geared towards the benefit of both the insured and uninsured public. These principles guide and inform the way in which we manage and conduct our affairs, and they also serve as the standard against which we measure our performance. Investigating insurance fraud requires a collaborative effort. By bringing together the collective resources of our members, law enforcement agencies, and other key stakeholders, we are able to facilitate the detection, prevention and mitigation of cross-carrier insurance crimes. We also assist in the prosecution of offenders and fraudsters through the ongoing insurance fraud investigation processes. We provide a platform for the public to safely and anonymously report fraudulent activities or suspected insurance crimes via email or the dedicated fraud line. Visit our website and follow us on social media for the latest industry developments in insurance fraud. The Insurance Crime Bureau. Intelligence that works. Today's task is really cool. Just coming up with an idea on a topic that's quite interesting uh, and that's affecting all insurers at the moment. One problem I have with the information sharing is like the Poppy Act, for example. Are you allowed to just share a person's information, even if they've been fraudulent. If it's in the interest of the public, so number one, it needs to be factual, yeah. and number two, it needs to be in the interest of serving the public. Yeah. So then you can release information, otherwise you're liable for information release. I've allowed Wayne to work through his thought process so that we can understand what, you know, the ideas that he's bringing forward. I think he is particularly passionate about a certain as part of that task which he wants to run with. Um, a rising cost of claims, um, also rising cost in having to investigate. Can I make a suggestion? Those strategic pillars, although I like them, um, I think it says almost nothing. Yeah. We should rather say, you know, this is a specific need. We're facing a rising cost okay, of claims. Yeah. Today, we have a very peaceful atmosphere. I think the team dynamic in the sense that we only have three people uh, works well in terms of preparation. Fraud coming from... All across, all, all across the industry. industry. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think of that then when we I present? We do all yeah. different, again, it's, it's really just going to say we're from different aspects and this is how it affects. 
it's like it's four big personalities in one room but at the end of the day again we are forging something that if everybody sells it the belief in it is um is is, is what we believe will drive us across the line in telly fraud yeah <laughs> I saw intelligence there. I was like, <laughs> oh, I thought you were referring to us as the intelligence. <laughs> we're having such a good time. I mean, if you sit in the room right now, we like super relaxed with each other. Uh, there's no franticness. It's been different. So, what do you want to do, Elizabeth? You want to go? Which 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 way do you want to go? Because I feel like we ever the sharing of information. I like that because then I can say like how it all fits in. So, okay. but the only problem I have is the legalities of that. That's what I'm worried about. Is that you want to take it? You can, can I take that? You can take it. It's fine. Guys, we need something here. We are in proposed solution because it needs to talk to this. There we go. Carrier there. Fraud. So we are so we're the fraud so, masters. We've expanded with a community of insurers yeah. who have come together. Um, We've got that uh, against the contextual uh, against the, the common. Yeah, the common guys. problem, common issue common of cross carrier uh, insurance board. Mm. Because the responsibility is not only with us as the insurance companies. No. Sorry, individuals also yeah. have just to just to dial it back. Yes. Um, I'm also just looking at the time. So yes. are we ag in agreeing that um, obviously still needs to be developed, yes. but our AI sort of solution? It's intense. We've got quite a lot of good ideas, but I think we sort of have a framework of what we want to, to run with. So which is good. I'm just slightly worried about time at the moment. We need to start putting our presentation together. That's 1% they're investing to possibly I don't think we need to go into avoid. it and ask. If they okay. come up with it, we'll no. say then we'll say yeah, that they'll contribute. We've got like 15 minutes left. We've got something solid and we just need to finalize all the details. So in the past, we started off with finalizing the details and then putting the meat, but now we've got some like a thick meat. Okay, so we're all clear on what we're doing. We all know what we're saying. Happy? I'm good. Cool. Good. Let's good to go. Yeah. You guys are ready, this is done, we've got this. Um, I, I, I guess we have to go for it now. Um, I'm feeling quite okay with what we, are, what we have at the moment. Um, not quite 100% there, but I think we'll do okay. Okay, let's go do it, good luck. Cheers, Cheers. Nice. let's go. Uh, what is the name of your team? The fraud busters. You're the fraud busters. All right, over to you. Good afternoon, panel. Today we join you concerned about the scourge of cross-carrier insurance fraud. And we are going to be suggesting a data system, the name of which will be disclosed later on in the presentation. We believe that the fraud that has taken place in the country has resulted in an increased amount of claims. As a result, an increased amount of premiums due to the increasing loss ratio. We also believe that there's a lack of proactiveness in terms of um, investigating or vetting policyholders um, at underwriting stage and it's only being done at claim stage. The name of our proposed data system is IntelliFraud. The placement of this system is of particular importance in the sense that lots of sensitive information will be, will be processed by the particular body. In this regard, we have identified the FSCA as a body that could potentially house and, and facilitate the working of the system. We believe that the system will be a sharing of information between insurers, but it's not only limited to them, uh, it will be to the benefit of the rest of the financial sector. We also believe that the content of data that will be shared will be the consumers' names, their ID numbers, their lines of business, as well as fraud history, as well as their claims history to help us in um, mitigating misrepresentation. Now, how the system will work. The front end user will input the proposed insured's name onto the system. The system will then generate a report almost immediately indicating the claims history as well as whether that proposed insured has been involved in any fraudulent activity in previous years. The idea is to have any documents 
submitted by and insured or proposed insured to be run through the system and so that the system would then identify any fraudulent components or red flags on those documents. We propose that the model be funded by a specific levy imposed by the FSCA. This would ensure a compulsory take up and, and participation in the system, which is key to the effectiveness of the system. Ultimately, the contributions would then come from, the ins from, from insurers, facilitated by way of a levy, and this would ensure that the cost is not essentially borne by the consumer or passed on to the consumer eventually, and the benefit in preventing cross-carrier um, fraud would, would, would ultimately fund the, the, the proposed model. We have decided that we need awareness campaigns specifically to educate consumers about fraud, how they can um, avoid it, the do's and don'ts of it. Consumers look at the financial sector as robbing them or taking money from them. Not only that, when it comes to claims, they feel like they're being investigated. So a system that will work like this before they even take up any policies will result in less questions being asked or them feeling like they're interrogated at the end. We'd like to thank you and the floor is open for any questions. Thank you. You, uh, you did that quite quickly. You had three and a half minutes left on your time and I hope that you haven't left anything important out that uh, could prove to be useful later. Garth, I mean, do you want to kick us off, seeing as you're the task sponsor? I wasn't convinced, though, that you gave us enough information around the fact that you understood syndicated fraud and how you would use information to detect it. Inputting information up front on an individual might give you an individual's claims history or you refer to if they had been bad in the past. But what about what they're doing with other insurers today? So the information that the community of insurers would have to provide through to the FSCA onto IntelliFraud would have to be on a more frequent basis. And the frequency of the, inf of the data being fed into the system will speak to a situation where if a person's name is called up, if my name is called up Chris, and I'm a proposed uh, insured, my details will show on the report generated where are my claims sitting at at the moment, where I am currently insured at the moment, and whether my name has been implicated uh, in previous insurance fraud incidences. Why would you have chosen the FFCA rather than an industry body? So I believe that, that the proposed model fits in with the, with the existing strategic objectives of the FSCA and they have an amount of credibility that will ensure that insurers uh, participate adequately. To me, it just seemed like it's just straying a little bit too far from you know, monitoring and managing the conduct of insurers. I think um, also to managing data belonging to policyholders. Um, is that really the I best place to store that? It, if you go, you go ahead and then. Yeah, sorry. We believe that the FSCA is, a, is more of a policy setter. So it really takes out or strikes out a lot of the legislative restrictions that creating an additional um, entity would, would have. Just one tiny detail. How does this system, which is now an additional step in the underwriting um, process, affect turnaround times, right, and considering the competitiveness of the industry? It's immediate. The idea is that put in the details, very much like any um, application on your phone, you put in the details and the, the report is generated almost immediately so that the broker doesn't have to wait and then the insurer reputation is not tarnished because you're making a decision almost immediately. All right, that's all we have time for. Thanks for your presentation. You're dismissed. Thank you. I feel a lot better about my performance in today's presentation. I don't want to say that this was in my comfort zone, but it was venturing towards my confidence zone. I don't think that us finishing in less than 10 minutes puts us at a disadvantage. Our presentation was very clear. We didn't want to complicate anything. 
The questions were intense and they were deep and I think we fielded it quite well as a team. We roughed off each other, uh, which was nice. Welcome back. Uh, what is the name of your team? The team Stronghold. All right, the floor is yours. Thank you for your time. We have Muta, Elizabeth, Wayne, and myself, Kyle. We make up Team Stronghold. And we've been tasked with coming up with a long-term solution in identifying, combating, and preventing losses arising from fraudulent claims in our industry. How we've come up with the solution is that we have created a non-profit organization. Now the motivation for this is basically the funding would come from these sectors, okay? They would fund the non-profit organization with a view to obtaining real-time information sharing to help combat the crimes that we're seeing and the fraudulent crimes that are ongoing. And not only that, we would have role players that would benefit from it, not, they didn't have to contribute financially, but they would benefit from the information as well as provide us with real-time information. These external role players could be such as ITC, SARS, government, the South African police services, as well as other institutions. What we've done, we've also investigated across different countries and how they've been combating uh, fraud. And something that comes to light is AI technology. And we believe that this AI technology is a solution that will be key in trying to prevent the severity and mitigate against fraudulent claims. In some cases, we've had family members being perpetrators of identity theft. It is important that we educate our consumers on how they can manage their emotions. In some cases, financial recovery is impossible. In other cases, financial recovery can be limited. So our victims need to manage their expectations so they know what is coming forth. From a legal perspective, there's obviously challenges with the introduction of the Poppy Act. The Poppy Act doesn't allow us to just share information like we want to, and thus we had to do research on the matter if, is, if, there any, if there's any exemptions for an organization such as ours. Under Section 6, 6A of the Poppy Act, the, uh, the interest of the public supersedes that of the data uh, that of the data subject. We would then also like to use this information and not only keep it to ourselves and our own organization, but to reach out to other organizations that are like-minded, other organizations that also want to take a stand against fraud in South Africa. Thank you. Garth, um, do you want to kick us off here? Thank you. No, thank you, Simon, and thank you to the team for the presentation. I found that quite interesting. Mutsa, you talked about buy-in, you talked about the, the non-profit organization being funded by the insurers. How would you create that buy-in? How are you going to go to a CEO of an insurance company that is already spending millions of rands on compliance and legislation and say, oh, I've got this new idea, uh, we want you to invest in this new idea? How, how would you have that discussion? Um, I think it's, it's quite simple, really. If you look at the, the claims trends um, in terms of fraudulent claims that have been paid out in the last couple of years, I think, with, I think speculation is around 10 billion in terms of total number of claims paid out. Obviously, the impact, the buy-in that we're hoping to get from them is a lot less um, than what these fraudulent claims are doing on their bottom line. So, for example, vis-a-vis -a, -vis a contribution of 10 million rands versus um, claims paid towards fraudulent claims of about a billion rands um, per company, I think that will be an easy buy-in from, from, our, from our financial services industry. So proving the return on investment, basically. Precisely. Okay. You're talking about interactions with government departments. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think your your ideas are nice to have, but the implementability of it is probably a bit science fiction, actually. What I need, need to get a sense out of from you guys is, is there real, like, what's your level of appreciation and understanding of the organization of the criminal enterprises that actually targets these industries. How and why is this currently thriving? Why is it such a big problem? Because there's already fraud combating and detection efforts in the industry. 
you know, we do aware of that there are existing bodies in place, but I think it's the real time aspect of it. And I think if we can minimize the time that it takes between identify an incident occurring and identifying that it has actually been associated with fraud, we can limit the impact, um, um, not maybe not in totality, but we can at least limit the impact or severity of that loss. Okay. To add on to your question, I'm sorry, Elizabeth, can I go? Yes. Uh, f fraud, fraud doers, criminals, they are better at sharing information than we are. And between criminals, if you just look at what's on the dark web, for example, if you know where to go, you can find any information on basically anything and they share it willingly and free. Uh, and, and free. You can get credit card details there without, with, with, without, spending, without spending a dime. They don't see it as a, as, 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 as a fraud because they say, insurance companies, they're gonna make money out of me regardless. So what's the harm in me adding a little bit? If somebody knows, if there's no harm, there's no foul. But if you don't curb the small things, uh, the big, the bigger picture gets exploded. Great. I had one last thing Thank on that. Just no, on no, that. sorry, we're done. Thank you, Carl. You guys are dismissed. Thank you. I feel as a team we performed quite well. Wayne, um, following the feedback from last week, he did quite well. He was articulating himself quite well. Um, Elizabeth was very, very nervous prior to the presentation, but I think she did put her um, a good performance. Everybody brought their A game. I'm quite um, impressed about everyone's performance today. I loved it. I think we were all passionate about it because we really believed in the concept. Now, whether that translates to us winning, I don't know. Whether it translates to their marking rubric, I don't know. Okay, so we've seen them both. Um, your thoughts, Garth? Some interesting discussions, some interesting ideas. My gut feel is that both teams missed the brief. Definitely some strong individuals, but I think some of them exposed weaknesses today. The real frustration really for me is you are given a brief and there is such a clear guideline as to what we're looking for and decide to toss that out the window. I was confident in the idea that we had put forward, but the idea is just as good as you able to present it. I, I, I'm getting so frustrated in the competition because I feel like there's more. Either somebody's holding back the process in both groups or they're just kind of comfortable with scratching the surface of these, uh, of these problems. I'm a little nervous, must be honest. I think as a team, we absolutely killed it. I'm feeling good with the way in which we, we presented. I'm feeling good with the questions we received. Who was your top scorer, um, having watched both presentations? I have an obvious top scorer. Right. What a star. Okay. But I also feel it's worthy to mention that individual. Their quality of the answers that they provided really gave me an impression that there was real depth behind you know, the research that they've done and it came through and how they answered the question. So I was very impressed by that. And it takes a lot for me to say that, of course. I did feel a strong sense that we did perform very well. And I was just hoping that I managed to represent the group as well as myself very well. I mean, obviously the thing we have to do today is we, we've, got to, we've got to let some people go, um, or a person. Um, is that clear to you who that would be? I think it's clear to me, Simon. Right. I think definitely that's my, my choice. That's your vote. I think this is the first time I feel good since the first one. Every question was answered, so I feel really, really confident. Yeah, I mean, purely based on today's performance, um, I would be in sure. agreement. Well, that, I mean, that's unfortunately our job yeah. to judge based on each day's performance, even though the scores are cumulative. So that is unfortunate, but I'm also in agreement. Should we get them back in here? Let's do this. Let's do it. Right. Right, welcome back. Um, I just wanted to thank the Insurance Crime Bureau and of course you personally. Thanks very much, Simon. I'm sure the candidates are in no hurry to hear my feedback. I just got the feeling that some of you are forgetting this is a competition. I think both teams, to an extent, missed the brief and fell into the trap of reinventing a wheel rather than using the existing wheel. 
Thanks, Garth. Knox? It almost feels like there's a lack of appreciation for the fact that this is such an incredible learning opportunity and we're missing briefs for such clearly articulated guide points that you guys aren't even using. There are industry titans that sit in front of you and give you stellar feedback that you're supposed to take in and we hope will help you grow. But what we're seeing instead is regression. Um, one of the things that I, I was just massively irritated with was we have our our sponsor here from the Insurance Crime Bureau, who actually, to some extent, provide the services that we were asking you to look into today. And what you did was, you came up with suggestions that really involved not using the Insurance Crime Bureau. <laughs> so, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I'm asking you to come up with a solution and you're suggesting we, you know, on the one hand we move it to the, to the FSCA and the other we, we set up something completely different. And I, and I think you missed a trick there because what we're really looking for is you saying Insurance Crime Bureau already has these members, already has access to all this information and let's just build onto that. You know, how do we do that? So it was kind of the most obvious thing that was sitting right in front of you and you didn't actually seize the opportunity. You somehow imagined, and I think that's what Garth was referring to when he said you were trying to reinvent a wheel and you had a perfectly good one right in front of you. One of the teams completely ignored the social aspect of what we were talking about. You know, what are we going to do to help victims of identity theft? It didn't even feature in the conversation. I felt that perhaps this morning I should have probably asked you to choose a leader because I think that would have been useful for the rest of this process now in this adjudication. I would like each group to tell me who they believe the leader was. You've got 30 seconds to confer with each other, and then I want the leaders to step forward, please. All right, thank you. Wayne, you're the leader of this group, is this? Did you volunteer for this or have you been pushed? No, I didn't volunteer. It came about. It just came about? We had a discussion. Right now in the discussion? Yes. Christopher, um, is this a voluntary leadership position or have you just been forced into it by your <laughs> colleagues? No, I think I guided the conversation. Um, we had many talking points uh, and yeah, I think I did fulfill the role of a leader, a pseudo leader in the circumstances. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested in your opinion as the leaders of these groups. Christopher, who do you feel could have made more of a contribution? I feel like each of us sort of contributed in our own way toward the various segments. What about in, in the, the presentation? I would have to say Marissa. Okay, thank you. Some, everybody played their role and played their part. If I need to pinpoint someone for doing maybe a percent less than someone else, that would have to be Elizabeth. All right, so Elizabeth and Marissa, We've got you both on the chopping block here following today's task. And if we fail to choose a winning group, both of you would be leaving us today. Fortunately, we do have a winning group. And our winning group today Team Stronghold. Elizabeth, you're safe. Marissa, 
your time with us ends here. Thank you. You're dismissed. It's wonderful that there's some team spirit amongst you, but this is a competition and only one person can be the insurance apprentice. There's no room for slip-ups. Knox said it. Some of you have regressed since we started. Some of you have actually improved. I'm not going to tell you who those people are though. All right, thank you, you're dismissed. I felt a whole lot better about my performance today, but the reality is that there are such strong competitors in this competition. It came as a shock. I didn't think this would be the round that I was going to be eliminated in. Making those decisions in those moments, it's, uh, it's not fun. They understand the accelerated learning part that they've signed up for. Mm, it's going to be interesting to see how they progress during the rest of the episodes. No one had to mention a name. Fortunately, a name was mentioned, and that's the reality of what we are, have entered into. I sympathize with Chris because it was a very difficult decision to make. I would have struggled just as much. I'm, I've I got no words at this point. So when Wayne chose me as the person that contributed the list, it is perception, that was his view, and I'm okay with it. I had to put someone's name down today that I have to work with again next week. I'm in a position now to be judged. It's business, it's not personal. <laughs> These are real relationships that we have built and it's relationships that I will treasure going forward. I gained so much in this process. It's something that we knew was coming, but nothing can prepare, prepare you for the moment. And then there were six. Tough competition.